Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today, we're taking yet another look at the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D with a big 40 game benchmark. But this time, we're not comparing it to the Core i9-12900K or even the KS version, but rather the much more sensible Core i7-12700KF. But before we do... Today's video sponsor is the MSI Optics MAG281URF 4K 144Hz gaming monitor. This is a feature-packed display that delivered great 4K gaming performance in our testing with the fast IPS panel, full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 ports, superb 95% DCI-P3 color space, and KVM 2.0 functionality. The MAG281URF is a product we'd recommend and it's out now worldwide. Plus for Australian and New Zealand viewers, score a bonus Steam gift card for a limited time when you purchase selected MSI products using the promotion link below T's and C's apply. Okay, so I believe the 12700KF is a sensible option for gamers because at just $370 US, you're basically looking at Core i9-12900K performance for an almost 40% discount. And that saving is important for a few reasons. First and foremost, it's a good amount of money to save. And in the fight with the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D, AMD claims that their high-end solution is at least 40% cheaper when factoring in CPU cost along with the entire platform. So you might be thinking, why didn't we start with the 12700KF since it's more of an apples to apples comparison in terms of pricing? The reason being is that AMD claimed in their official press material that the 5800X 3D is now the world's fastest gaming desktop processor, and depending on how you configure the 12900K and the games you use for testing, that is technically correct. Though I'd argue it's one of the world's fastest gaming processors, as it basically matches the 12900K and 12900KS across a wide range of games, more than the 20 AMD tested anyway. So in short, our initial testing set out to investigate AMD's own claims and to review the 5800X 3D from the ultimate gaming CPU angle. Now, for those of you seeking high-end performance, but also care about getting the most bang for your buck, it's time to see how AMD's vCache creation stacks up to what we feel is the best value high-end option from Intel, the Core i7-12700KF, so let's get into it. For testing the Core i7 processor, I'm using the MSI Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4 motherboard, while the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D has been tested on the MSI X570S Carbon Max Wi-Fi, and I've also included the standard 5800X for reference. Now, Rather than use super expensive DDR5 memory with the 12700KF, which really doesn't make sense from a value standpoint, both CPUs have been paired with DDR4 3800CL16 memory. So not only is this an apples to apples comparison, but I think it's a more realistic configuration. The other test system notes to be aware of is the fact that resize all bar is enabled using the GeForce RTX 3090 Ti. Okay, let's get into the data. Starting with Valorant, we see that the 5800X and 12700KF are very evenly matched, with the original Ryzen 7 CPU only winning by a few percent. That being the case, the 5800X 3D was up to 28% faster at 1080p when looking at the 1% lows, and even at 4K maintained a 22% margin. So a clear win here for the 5800X 3D, though I'm not sure how many of you will really notice the difference, but I'll leave that up to the pro gamers amongst you to decide. Interestingly, testing with City Skyline sees the 12700KF match the 5800X 3D, making it 18% faster than the standard 5800X. So a solid result here for the Core i7 part, especially given how much cheaper it is than the 3D model. Another game where the 12700KF performs really well is StarCraft 2, where it basically matched the 5800X 3D, which is impressive given the 3D version was over 50% faster than the standard model. Apex Legends is pretty well GPU limited in our testing with these high-end CPUs, as all can drive well over 200 FPS at 1080p using the RTX 3090 Ti. The 12700KF does appear to sit between the two Ryzen processors, and if you require no more than 260 FPS on average, then really any of these CPUs will work just fine. Dying Light 2, it's not exactly a CPU heavy game, and as an action role-playing survival horror, it doesn't really require hundreds of frames per second. So 160 FPS at 1080p is probably enough, and it was certainly enough to match the 5800X 3D, though the 1% lows were 8% lower. Still, comparable performance overall. 
The 5800X and 12700K are neck and neck in Rainbow Six Siege, with both just shy of 530 FPS on average at 1080p, making the 5800X 3D up to 13% faster at this resolution. And then by the time we hit 1440p, we are entirely GPU bound with the RTX 3090 Ti. So again, it is hard to say how useful the performance advantage offered by the Vcache is. Moving on to Battlefield 5, the Core i7-12700KF finds itself positioned between the 5800X 3D and 5800X. At 1080p, an improved average frame rate performance by 22% over the 5800X, while also trailing the 3D model by a 13% margin. So I'd say an impressive result overall for the Core i7-12700KF. Next we have F1 2021, and here the 12700KF again finds itself situated between the 5800X and 5800X 3D, though it is closer to the non-3D model, beating it by a 12% margin for the 1% lows at 1080p, while it was 20% slower than the 5800X 3D. So while much slower than the Vcash enabled model, all pushed well over 200 FPS. Halo Infinite does play better on the 12700KF opposed to the 5800X, we're looking at a massive 31% increase in 1% lows at 1080p, allowing the Core i7 processor to roughly match the 5800X 3D, so a good result here for Intel. The 12700K also matched the 5800X 3D in Red Dead Redemption 2 at 1080p, before becoming entirely GPU limited at 1440p and of course 4K. We're looking at a 13% improvement at 1% lows at 1080p, making the Core i7 processor just 3% slower than the 5800X 3D. The second last game that we're going to look at is The Outer Worlds, and this is one where the 5800X 3D was up to 57% faster than the 5800X. And the 12700KF, that's also much faster than the 5800X, but even so, the 5800X 3D still managed to boost the 1% lows by 19% at 1080p, and was even up to 17% faster at 1440p. Last up, we have Death Stranding, and here the Intel CPUs behave quite oddly, delivering relatively strong 1% low performance with rather weak average frame rate performance. And as a result, the 12700K was 4% faster than the 5800X at 1080p, we're looking at the 1% lows, but 14% slower for the average frame rate. And this meant that the 5800X 3D was up to 31% faster than the Core i7 processor. Of course, this is a single player game, so pumping out over 160 FPS in our testing at 1080p is likely more than sufficient for this title. Okay, so we've now looked at a little over a dozen of the games tested, but with 40 in total, there is a lot more data to go over. So let's take a look at the breakdown graphs covering the 1080p, 1440p, and 4K resolutions. Okay, so at 1080p, using the GeForce RTX 3090 Ti, the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D was just 8% faster than the Core i7-12700KF on average, though it was as much as 33% faster seen in Death Stranding. There were 14 games where the margin exceeded 10% in favour of the 5800X 3D, with just a single game where the 5800X 3D was slower by a 5% margin or greater, being Call of Duty Warzone, where it was indeed 5% slower. So with both using DDR4 3800CL16 memory, the 5800X 3D is the faster gaming processor, but for the most part the margin is quite small. So as you'd expect at the more popular 1440p resolution for high-end gaming, the CPU plays less of a role as games become more GPU bound, even with an RTX 3090 Ti. Here the 5800X 3D was just 5% faster on average, with just 7 examples with double digit margins. Then at 4K, the 5800X 3D it was just 1% faster on average, and now the vast majority of games tested were entirely GPU bound. Now, for those of you interested, the 5800X and 12700KF were quite evenly matched overall. The Ryzen CPU was slower, though only by a 5% margin on average. There were just 10 examples where the 5800X was slower by a 10% margin or greater, and then just a single example where it was faster by a double digit margin, and that example was Death Stranding, where it was 17% faster. Then there were 17 games where the margin was 5% or less in either direction and we typically deem that to be a tie. Okay, so the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D might be one of the absolute best gaming CPUs, but does it actually make sense to buy when compared to more competitively priced options such as the Core i7 12700KF? Well, let's explore that. Right now, the 12700K, that can be purchased for $370 US, while the non-K version, which delivers basically the same out-of-the-box performance shown here, costs $310 US. 
A motherboard pricing on the Intel side, that can be a bit of an issue. A decent Z690 option that starts at around $200. Though MSI's Pro Z690-P can be purchased for $170 right now, but still that is expensive for what it is. Those of you opting for the non-K model, you're probably best off going with a B660 motherboard. And the best value option here in our opinion is the MSI Pro B660M-A Wi-Fi for $150 US. And that means the 12700KF with a cheap Z690 motherboard will set you back $540 US, while the 12700F with a good B660 board comes in at $460 US. The 5800X 3D on the other hand, that is meant to be $450 US, but right now it is out of stock basically everywhere. The official Newegg listing is $450 US, but with no stock you'll have to deal with a third party seller who has jacked up the price by an extra $50. But let's go and give AMD the benefit of the doubt here and say that the 5800X 3D is $450 in the hope that stock will improve, Though I have to say I'm not really confident about that. But anyway, going off the best case scenario for AMD, the 5800X 3D is $450, while a decent X570 motherboard costs $180 US, making this a $630 US combo. Now you could go even more budget with a B550 board with something like the B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi for $120, reducing the total package cost to $570, but that's a compromise that I wouldn't really like to take with such a premium CPU. So assuming that you get the 5800X 3D for $450, it'd cost you 17% more than the 12700KF combo. And I think that's a justifiable expense for those of you primarily focused on gaming. You could also make it just 6% more expensive by going with a B550 board, but you really can make similar compromises with Intel to get the price down. So it just becomes a battle of how low will you go. The 12700F on a B660 board, it's hard to beat at $460, and that's a 15% discount from the 12700KF combo for no noticeable difference in out-of-the-box performance. I feel though that combo would be going up against the new $300 5700X, and you can throw that on a B550 board for a combo cost of $420, and at that point they really are very evenly matched, at least for those of you exclusively gaming. And that does seem to be the takeaway here. There's really no clear winner. If AMD are actually able to meet the demand for the 5800X 3D and get the price down to that $450, it would be competitive with the 12700KF in terms of value, while the older Ryzen 7 parts cover off the 12700F. So if you're building a new PC right now, or at the very least are going with a full platform upgrade, and you're not willing to wait for next gen parts, which we'd probably recommend you do at this point, there's really no clear path to take, assuming pricing is similar to what we're seeing over at places such as Newegg. Of course, if you're not just gaming with your PC, then the Core i7-12700 series becomes a lot more appealing as it generally offers much better application performance than Zen 3 based Ryzen 7 processors. So I think the best way to break it down is this. If you're wanting to build a high-end gaming system with the goal of receiving the best performance possible, without going overboard on the cost of stuff like memory, then the 5800X 3D is the way to go. However, if you're merely after a strong gaming CPU that's also great for general use and productivity, then I'd say the 12700 variants are the better all-rounders. There's also the cheaper 5700X to consider, that's a nice addition to the Ryzen 7 lineup, even if it is a bit too late. And I think ultimately the 12700F is going to be better value given that it is faster for gaming and then much faster for most productivity applications, whether they be single or multi-core. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, then please do give it a like, subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to get more involved with the Harbour Box channel and get some cool perks in return, then we do have Floatplane and Patreon. Links for those are in the video description. You'll get access to our exclusive Discord server, monthly live streams to myself, behind the scenes content and Q&A. So check those out if you're interested, but if not, perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.